No, good evening. Um, I'd like to just begin by letting you know that tonight we are videotaping our presentation. So if you don't want to be seen on camera, stay in the back row, which all of you are. Um, but we're videotaping it primarily for our parents in the following countries. China, Korea, Japan, Turkey, Taiwan, Vietnam, Mexico, the Czech Republic, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and secondarily for those who in Winona, Minneapolis, and the surrounding communities who are not able to attend. Um, this will be on our website tomorrow, so we want to say welcome to you here in Winona. Welcome to our parents who are unable to attend, whether they're across the river or across the, the globe. So we're really excited to be here tonight and to welcome all of you. In our Catholic tradition, the church ends the day in prayer with a service called Compline. And so I'd like to invite us to just pause and let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you, God, have prepared in the sight of all people, a light to reveal you to all the nations. Guard us, O Lord, while we are awake, and keep us while we sleep, that, whether waking, we may watch with Christ, and sleeping, we may rest in peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Live Jesus in our hearts. It's my extreme privilege, privilege to introduce my colleague and co-worker, um, Mr. Pat Bolin. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. No meetings are easy. But they're really important, and uh, we haven't done this in a long, long time to gather our two communities together. And I'm really glad you're here. We have uh, parents and educators here tonight, all the way through high school. And they, she says a lot about you as parents, that you're here to support our combined mission for our schools. We're very excited about the cooperation uh, between the two schools. I think it really sets us up to be extremely successful for our children. Um, one thing I can tell you that we're absolutely committed to working together. Uh, sister and I have met several times, and I've met with a lot of different people over the last uh, uh, few weeks from Cotter and, and the surrounding community. We're really trying, because I think we have a unique opportunity with this Catholic system in Winona that really very few schools can ever say they have. So we're excited about working together, and tonight we want to kind of touch upon a number of things, but most importantly, uh, we want to tackle three subjects. First of all, uh, we want to talk about establishing a culture of kindness. And I'm going to talk about that in a little further detail later. Uh, and Sister is going to take over and talk about integrating our curriculum, which is absolutely critical for our future success. And number three, to help our children live lives of faith and conviction. And we're also going to take some questions uh, at the end as well. Uh, tonight we have St. Mary's University, Dr. Scott Sorbay, and Roger Peckover, Dr. Peckover here today. Um, and we've been meeting with them, Sister and I, over the last several months as well, uh, because we're so blessed to have St. Mary's University here in town. And we want to partner with them wherever we can. And we've had some very fruitful discussions. And I want to invite those two gentlemen forward this time to say a few words. Well, the first thing I need to say is I am so very grateful uh, to be able to be here before you this evening. Uh, this, is, this is really a special place in a lot of ways. Um, one is because you decided to come together and to think maybe more openly about a conversation that we've been extending to one another uh, for some time. And uh, sometimes I think that um, when we think about our community, we can frame uh, this idea of being a, a community leader as someone who is a, uh, a beacon for others. 
And I see so many of you out there that are doing that. And other times we can think about leadership as really being a mirror and reflecting some of the things that are available to us in the Winona area. And that's really what brought us together in the first place for opening some doors for some new conversations. And I wanted to read to you just a, a short statement that was kind of a touchstone for some of our conversations when we started thinking about what would happen if. So we decided to get together in thoughtful dialogue to consider how we would work together to improve the quality of life for families in Winona and beyond. We asked what we could be doing together in K through 16 Catholic education to invest in the next generation in meaningful and lasting ways. And that, that phrase really got us to uh, turn to one another in an open way. What can we be doing together in K-16 Catholic education to improve the quality of life uh, through an investment in our next generation? And oftentimes we put ourselves in, in boxes, right? We might think of, well, I'm in K-6, or I'm in 712, or I'm in higher ed. And the nice thing about sitting down with the group of leaders that we have access to here in Winona is that uh, we, we easily stepped outside of those. And we looked at things that we have in common. We do have shared purposes. We do also have some common ground. And one piece of that common ground for us, we discovered immediately, is uh, besides a commitment to high quality education, we love <coughs> our students. And because we love our students, we love the families of our students, and we see them as a primary uh, a receiver of the kind of services that we're providing. So while we haven't made any specific plans or promises, we have agreed to be a mirror for one another, to open doors of possibility, and to really think about, in a much broader way, how we develop our young people, our next generation, to be people that uh, lead us in ways that we maybe haven't thought about yet. To give them the kinds of skills that we're having trouble imagining, maybe. And to create the kind of world uh, that they really deserve and have waiting for them. And that's, once again, one of the things that makes me so grateful about being here with you, is uh, I see it in your, in your faces, I see it in your uh, level of commitment, and your level of involvement. So uh, the, the overriding uh, sense that I have from our, from our initial meetings and thinking and rethinking and asking what if, it's really a sense of hospitality, of listening, of caring for the ideas of one another, and for uh, seeking some opportunities that maybe we haven't sought before. So once again, I'm grateful to be here with you. I'm grateful for the, the leaders that you have. And I'm also, I need to say to uh, uh, those of you who are leaders uh, in your families and leaders in the classroom, I'm really grateful for your leadership too, because all of us, uh, know that, that leadership is really an activity in which we all engage. And, and so uh, by being here tonight, too, you're, and, and being part of the audience that will be watching, uh, you two are leading the way uh, for helping us to think and imagine uh, together in caring and loving ways. And now I'll invite my good colleague and one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Roger Peckman.
I believe that we have something that we are sharing at the deepest level possible, and that is a spiritual commitment to life lived in abundance through the capacity to come together, to realize possibilities, and that when people do come together and are energized by the Spirit in ways that only Sister Judy can do, for example, <laughs> that amazing things happen that create abundance in a community. And it is our hope that we can continue to explore what that means as a faith community working together uh, and grounded in the spirit. And so uh, I thank you for the opportunity to be here with you tonight. And we look forward uh, to great partnerships that will serve both of our communities and the larger community. Thank you. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, Sister and I are doing three different things. Now, obviously, in an educational institution, you can come up with Lots, but we really kind of broke it down to these three after several meetings and kind of what do we want our two schools uh, to really represent and uh, at the end of the day we came up with the, the first point here is we want a culture of kindness. Well, what does that mean? Uh, we first of all have great kids. I, I, you know, this week, nearly every day you can see something going on in both schools that really make you pause and just go, wow, that is so cool. These kids really care about each other. They're looking out for each other. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in my job is I do playground supervision every day. And I love being there. And I see all sorts of things happening, but I see our kids often comforting one another, including one another. And then sometimes I see them not doing that. And that's you know, our job to, to correct them and to make sure that they want to include their fellow classmates and things like that. But that's real life happening out there on the playground. It's, uh, it's a lot more teaching than I ever realized I'd be doing. But we're teaching a culture of kindness there, to care about others and uh, to, to include others. And that's really important. You know, today in our society, we hear a lot about bullying. And uh, unfortunately, that's sometimes what parents come up with right away, that their child is being bullied. What I see in our school, primarily out on the playground, is kids doing the same thing that all of us experienced when we were kids. Not being nice to each other, not including, calling a name, uh, maybe hitting someone, pushing them because they didn't get their way. They're struggling to, to learn to turn the other cheek. They're struggling to learn what do they do when they don't get their way. And that's all part of learning, and that's good. But sometimes I think we take it too far and we, we call it bullying. Bullying to me is when you're constantly and, and targeting someone. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, I don't believe that happens very often, and certainly if it does, we want to know about it. We want to do something about it because we want the children of our schools to feel loved at all times and to feel that culture of kindness that we're trying to establish. But what I'm here to tell you is that we have that in, in a big way. Our kids really do care about one another. Uh, sometimes they get off the rails a little bit and don't do what they should do. And that's our job to help them get back on track. Our central guide for this culture of kindness is without a doubt our Catholic faith. We have the best faith in the world to help us with this topic. Uh, Jesus showed us the example of a culture of kindness. Uh, so we're going to uh, really rely on our teaching, our Catholic faith in this. We also have a few other tools. Uh, we have our powder and wax weight, which are identical. And uh, you'll see it all over both buildings. And I really think it's a great guide. You know, help others succeed. Let others know they matter. See the problem, own the problem. Um, Honor the absent. All those are great things for us to be teaching our children. Um, those are the cornerstones, along with our faith, to help us get through this. The number one thing is we want to live out the gospel values every day in our school. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us special. I love teaching in a faith-based school. It, it makes all the difference to me. I don't know how you really can teach the most important life lessons without it. Uh, I just want you to know that we really are committed to this culture. And we know that we're not perfect. And we know we're going to stumble on occasion. But I can guarantee you that the, everyone that works at both of our schools wants this and is working towards this daily. And again, we're, we're not going to get there all the time as quick as we'd like. But I want you to know that we really do care about all the children. We want their dignity to be upheld. 
Uh, we want all of our students to live an abundant life. And part of that is, is being in an atmosphere that you feel comfortable and you feel loved. And I think, uh, again, there are so many examples of it. You know, if you went to Alex Grelo's uh, event over in the gym, there was a lot of love in the gym that, that night. It was very, very clear and evident. But it happens all the time, throughout the day, in the hallways, kids just being nice to each other and uh, just doing good things. So I'm just very, very proud of these two schools and what they represent. And I'm here to tell you that we know we, we can do better and we will do better. And we need your support in doing so. But having that culture is absolutely critical for our children. And uh, I feel good about where we're at. Uh, one thing we've, we've implemented at WAX that I think makes a lot of sense is called Think. And we've talked to our students about this. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And if our children will think of those things as, as they make statements to one another. And uh, again, I just want you to know that our staff and faculty are committed to this culture. And we look forward to partnering with you in the future to make it happen. At this time, I'm going to bring Sister Judy forward to continue. What's right? What's wrong? What's most helpful? 
uh, hats uh, think, T-H-I-N-K. How do they make those decisions? How do they analyze other people's opinions and not just judge them? How do they analyze them for the truth? And then most importantly, and what is our last um, uh, area of focus, is how do they then act out of that knowledge in a way that is based on faith and that is lived out in conviction? That's why we're here. That's why all of us are here. You as parents, us as educators, we love our children. They are the light of our lives. They're the hope of the future. But we need to be adults for them, adults who lead them, who show them the way, who provide them with skills, training, opportunities, but most of all, a witness to faith, a witness to that which lights our life a witness to the things that we really hope for them. So it's these initiatives, a culture of kindness and respect, an integrated curriculum that builds level after level after level, and, and, a, and a system or a culture that promotes faith and conviction. That's what we're here for. We're hoping that's what you're here for and that this reflects your goals for our students. So this is what Pat and I have committed ourselves as, as administrators in the system to work on and to develop with your help and with your care. We'd like to also share with you briefly um, where we are in the capital campaign, but maybe we could also take some questions on this part, or maybe we could hold questions. Should we hold questions till the end of it, the campaign? We'll do the, I'll do the campaign very briefly. This is what I've shared with our faculty, and I thought you need to know where we are with the Centennial Campaign. Um, remember, the campaign is for the entire system. It's for both WAX and COTL. And so there are four initiatives, and so I wanted to give you an update. Today, we've received $5 million in gifts. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. We've received that money from about um, 55 donors. We have, we're now entering into the next stage to ask a broader appeal. Of that money, um, it's about 62% of it is a, a achieving our goal. And of the money that we've received, 76% is restricted to one of the four initiatives. And we've already spent some of the money. You're sitting in it, the windows in these lovely buildings, uh, the renovations in Roger Bacon, which we will be blessing and dedicating this Thursday at 1.15 if you're able to come. Um, so we're gonna have a blessing, but Bishop Quinn will be here for that. So we've spent some money of it. We've spent about $3 million already. 60%, um, so 60% has been spent. And of the monies remaining, 60% are restricted to one of the four initiatives. So where are we at then? The first uh, initiative was the enrollment initiative. The goal for that was $1.3 million over three years. And really it was to uh, increase or provide tuition assistance for families who would not otherwise be in our system, to provide some pilot programs for in the WAC system to really get families into the system, and then to appeal to wider audiences through marketing and branding and some of those kinds of things. Today, we have funds that are restricted to this initiative in the amount of $1,040,000. So we're a little short of the goal, but that's one of the the more uh, funded goals, much more of the money has been restricted for that initiative. The second initiative, which again, we, as we pointed out, has primarily been accomplished, and that's the building and upgrade initiative, um, the protecting of the windows, the, the improvements in Roger Bacon, the science labs, the updating. Um, the goal for that was 2.4. Um, it's primarily been, it was all restricted for that, so we have the opportunity of um, moving some of that money to other initiatives if people really would like to give to any of those, this initiative specifically. So the original benefactor, which uh, gave over $2 million, said that money could be moved if other people felt they'd like to contribute to this initiative. The third initiative is a technology initiative, and that goal was $500,000. 
Um, it seeks to upgrade the academic use of technology at both WAX and Cotter, um, implementing one-on-one -on -one technology in fifth grade and a test program here at Cotter. Um, interesting to me, uh, to date, no monies have been restricted for use in this project. Um, you might have thought this would be a real popular one, but no one has restricted money in. And we've spent about $100,000 already in this um, initiative. And the last um, one is uh, called the Student Achievement Center, or sometimes referred to as Centennial Hall and the Gym. Um, the goal for that is $3.7 million. Um, it's, it was focused on creating a signature athletic facility across the street, um, comprised of a practice gym, which would allow our students to get home before 11 o'clock at night, um, uh, new restrooms on the main floor, and a student center. To date, the monies designated toward this initiative are $400,000. So where do we stand then? The remaining tasks, the goal is 8.1, the gifts received is 5.06, 5 the gifts we need to reach our goal are 3.04. Um, if we were looked at just each initiative, um, this is where each initiative stands. Three million is a lot of money we still have to raise. Um, we're not finished, we're continuing the effort. Um, I'm taking this same presentation uh, to Seoul, Korea, where I will have a parent meeting similar to this on November 30th and present to them our same um, needs and, and ask for their help. We're, we'll be appealing to all of you. Um, I guess I would just say if any of you know of sources we have not um, reached out to, people we have not uh, uh, tapped into or sources that you think work, business, whatever, we would be really grateful to know that. But it's a tremendous campaign. We've raised a lot of money. It's, a, it's, a, it's very important and we're going to keep on working on it. So that's pretty much what we wanted to say to you, but primarily we wanted to listen. Um, so we want to hear questions, comments, or anything that you would like to say. There are two microphones up here. This one can be passed back. Um, and Pat and I will entertain questions. Here. And then, um, 
you know, particularly in the uh, in the elementary ages, I've been a little disappointed, I think, with some of the hands-on, particularly in the sciences, and how do we actually get our kids engaged in science beyond just the books, and so they're experiencing it and learning maybe in different ways. What well, great question. Uh, first of all, trying to meet all of our students' needs is the, kind of the first part to your question because the one thing I really discovered in elementary education, uh, I always thought in high school you'd have kind of a big divide between uh, your top students and your bottom students, but the truth of the matter is the same thing exists in elementary and kindergarten. Kids who can read chapter books and kids who can't read a sentence. So right from the start, we're dealing with a big difference in ability levels. So we really are tackling that uh, problem and uh, really trying to serve the needs of all the students. Uh, this year at a grade level meeting, a parent uh, raised their hand and said, I think you're doing a great job with the, the upper level kids, doing a great job with the lower kids who are struggling. What about my daughter? She's right in the middle. So, you know, every, every parent has a child in a certain area and they want them to improve. The, the bottom line is we want every kid to improve. We want every kid to move up or try to move up. So maybe where our bottom is is where another school's middle would be. Uh, as far as the sciences go, we, we're, we're, you know, with our, one thing as far as with the teachers, we have great teachers. But like anyone, uh, too often in education, we just throw out new ideas and then we don't give people the training to, to make it happen. So we're really working on the training. I think we've probably broken a record at WAX the last two years of sending teachers to workshops. I'm saying yes to everything because I think that shows a lot to them that they, they want to go to these workshops and it shows a commitment by the school. Uh, we have had Nathan Moore from Winona State University over talking about some inquiry method, science. We've, we've bought two or three different curriculums and some of the teachers are using them. Um, but I mean, I th honestly, I think more need to and we're kind of working that way. Um, the one thing I know about the school day in elementary is it's too short. It's, we just don't have enough time to get things in. For instance, we'd like to have Spanish in fifth and sixth grade but my teachers told me we, we just can't do it because we're going we're gonna to suffer in other areas. And right now we're tested in math, science, and, and reading. And, and that's important to us to do well on those tests. It kind of gives us a chance to say where we're at. So uh, your question is a great one. That's one of the reasons we added the Summer Academy. Extra classes there. We're going to expand that this summer. Uh, that's why we have STEM opportunities for grades 4 through 6. These last three Saturdays in November. And also where we had uh, Science Club. You know, so those are some efforts. At the end of the day, we simply need more time. But I, I think your question is a really good one. And I think we as a staff do have to look at using more hands-on. The more hands-on, the better. And I know I'm committed to that. And I believe a lot of our teachers are as well. It's a great question. Thank you. It's also part of the reason why we've uh, partnered with St. Mary's is in hopes that by having young uh, student teachers who have the, the latest technology, the latest techniques, the latest training and curriculum that they can offer our teachers who are teaching their little hearts out some opportunities to see some other ways to do it. So that's part of our desire of, work, of partnering with St. Mary's and we become for them a great uh, laboratory for their students as well. Other questions? That's really not been a part of the conversation since I've been here. Um, I think our desire is simply we're all about the same thing, and that's what was so what hit all of the, the four of us when we sat down at the table was, oh my gosh, we're all committed to the same thing: Catholic education in Winona. Let's share resources. So to answer your question, there has not been that conversation. I've not been a part of any of those where there's been any discussion of any closer collaboration other than what we're doing. Yeah, I think to further add to that, Tim, the fact is, uh, you know, we did look at that quite a bit about three years ago, I think it was. And it's certainly not, it's kind of, I guess, at this point, it's on the back burner. I think right now, we're really committed to improving our, our delivery of education. And you know, we really want to focus right now on that. And not that that issue is, is gone. There may be a day when everyone is on this end of town, uh, because there's certainly room, uh, but at this time we're really focusing on 
uh, on the educational delivery and uh, working together. So that's kind of moved to the front uh, of, of the operation.
for saying that, because that's, to me, the heart of what we have to do. We are no longer information providers. I mean, in the past, we poured information into students. I sat, took copious notes. I have boxes and boxes and boxes of notes from all my levels of school. But what really our students need is just that variability you're talking about. How do I know what to do in this situation? Out of my values, out of the kind of person I want to be. How do I choose? The world, the boss, the everybody, the culture can tell me a ton of different directions. The church tells me some, my parents, my background, but what, what do I as a, a person of faith, a person who wants to be good in this world? I had a wonderful opportunity that recently to meet with two young um, students in the busy persons retreat. One was from Korea and one was from uh, Winona. And I asked both of them, what do you want to be? And they both said, a good person. They want to be a good person. So what are we doing? How do we help them be good people? And I agree with you, how do we define what a good person is? And when we met as teachers in the fall, as a faculty, we talked about that. What is a Cotter student? What do we want someone when they walk across the stage and get that diploma? What, what, what skills do they have? What abilities? I think we do need to work harder at defining that very clearly and be very specific in how we're going to meet that. Again, a great answer. <laughs> Top any of these. This is hard. <laughs> I'm go first next time. Uh, defining success. We have to define success. You know, on the playground, as I, I like to talk about that, because that's my classroom. I don't get to teach like like everyone else. I get to coach, but my classroom right now is, is the playground. And when our children make mistakes, they feel bad. They know they made a mistake. The problem is a lot of times they don't know how to handle the situation. My favorite story. A kid just got upset at another kid, and I said, well, why'd you do that? Because he's annoying. It was the answer. And I felt like saying, you're right, he is annoying. <laughs> but you still can't kick him in the shins. I mean, don't do that. But at the end of the day, we're trying to teach our children skills, how to handle life situations. And, and I think defining success is what we need to do for our students. And we need to let them know that it's not about money, it's not about, uh, uh, rank, it's, it's about doing the right thing on a daily basis and caring about your fellow man and, uh, and, and, and being faithful to your God. And I, I think those are things that we are striving. And, uh, you know, as Sister said, when those kids walk across the stage, we, we want them to be ready for the life that's ahead of them. We know, you know, truthfully, we have a lot of smart kids in the school. They really are very brilliant. I mean, I look at, at what they learned compared to what I learned, and it's, it's just staggering what they know. But at the end of the day, they may know a lot, but we need to make sure that they know how to take that knowledge and live a good life. We want to respect your time. And so um, we told you that we would get you out of here in under an hour. So we, I want to have time for cookies. Um, so if there are, <laughs> are there any further questions? I don't want to cut anyone off either. We have one final thing. Dave? How do we, how do we set expectations uh, for our kids. I don't think we set a mind up. Some kids have a natural uh, desire for perfection. Other kids have the ability for perfection, but either at home they won't listen, which is common, or we don't set that expectation high enough and follow up on it in the classroom, the student and the parent. <laughs> that figures I get the toughest question of the night. Um, I, I agree with that we need to set the standards higher, without question. I, I like that. Um, and we, we need to give our kids the skills to, to achieve that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, those same kids living in your house are living in mine too. You know, I mean, I always get a kick out of when people say, oh, your daughter or son, what a great young man. I go, really? It's the same guy living with me, but uh, they tend to act better in public, which is good. But uh, uh, that's a tough one. We need to strive, we need to set the bar high. Uh, you know, I, I think we do that 
and sometimes really well in our athletic teams. You know, we have goals and we kind of have measurable things. And academically, it's a little bit harder because, again, of that division that we have of, of learners. And we just need to, to really, I think at the end of the day, we need to tell them, you have a lot of potential, but you're not reaching it. We need you to do more. And, uh, and I think we can do that. Sister, you got a big follow-up for me here. <laughs> I think we need to work together. That's my goal of having these meetings. As parents and teachers, we need to be on the same path. And that's why I guess my question, what do you want us to be doing? Because we can work all we want here and you work all you want at home, but if we aren't all on the same path, we're really all going to be disappointed. And so my hope is that we can more and more be able to really be in dialogue as parents and school to say, here's my student. My dream is that we have an individual academic plan for each student, not just special students. Every student is special. But we have an individual academic plan for each student. This is where they are. This is where we want to see them be this year. And this is where we hope to see them by the time they graduate. And we're going to do this part, and you're going to do that part. And that we agree, and we know, and, and you can support um, and promote that at home, and we can support and promote that here. I think it's possible. I, I think we just need to have more conversation and dialogue together. Okay, we want to close with a, a brief uh, video. This is a video that was made all by the students with some help from Jody and others at the WAC system to thank our benefactors. It's a great video. Um, the students were, did not rehearse, you can tell, uh, as they say, gotta go now. Um, but but there, it's a wonderful video, so it, if I can do this right, or Greg will help me up in his little box. Um, tell me, Greg, what to do here. <laughs> 